Well, actually, I came up with my name, Strawberry. I was tired of answering to all the other nicknames everybody was calling me. So mm -hmm. it took me almost a whole day to come up with a new name for myself that only I would answer to. And from eating a bundle of strawberries, being surrounded with my strawberry cereal and part tarts, I said I'll just call myself Strawberry. When was that? That was around the age of either 16 or 17. So I was in middle school going into high school. And... Yes. <laughs> Not sponsored by, but soon we'll be sponsored by Crest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just got tired of so many other nicknames, you know, Sinbad, Curry Top, Dennis Rodman. <laughs> it was just so many. Like, even, they even called me Harry Potter, even though they meant Ron Weasley. <laughs> what? So, I was just over it. You know, Cisco. Like, anybody that had any different other color hair, that's who I was called. Right, and right. I was just like, you know what? No. So once I came up with strawberry, initially I thought it, was, it sounded a little pointish, but then I was like, I'm just going to go with it. Because it's both my favorite colors, red and green. So when I started, when I accepted that, I started introducing myself to people. And I was like, my name is Derek, but everyone calls me strawberry, even though no one called me strawberry yet. And it just... No one calls you Derek now. No. <laughs> yep. And it just, it just took on like a plague. It just easily canceled out all the other nicknames like it just it did its own job without right. really having to do anything right. with it you know so you how long have you been in here for living here um september the 14th made it well, october the 14th will make it eight years i've been in this spot oh wow right so after i get up and get prepared and get my day started i take in a deep breath put on my strawberry face <laughs> and head out the door. But our next stop, we're going to the Department of Health to talk about who's still gonna be involved with this project I got going on. Talk to you later. So I had to come up here and get a few video clips. So I'm about to go mess with them. <laughs> but it's good to see you. It's probably, that's all the open one. Yeah, I'm good. Good, how are you? Good, how you been? I've been good. That's good. That's good. good to see you. You too, babe. Now, then you're picking me. Get back to the video. 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 Get back to Are you? Okay, that's enough. You can't have a house too, sweetheart. Who is this? Who's my toy? Hi, baby. I'm your mom. I'm your mom, okay? I'm your mom, I'm your mom. I'm your mom. I'm your mom. So. Where are you? You still at um, crazy change. No. Where are you? Um, GMAC. Good crazy. GMAC. Dude, that's why I met her. I look better than everybody, so it's sad. Girls are at home. He wear too many hats. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, this is the <laughs> infamous Kenya Hutton, and I will uh, let you tell him about him. Right? Um, um, so, yeah, so my name is Kenya Hutton. Um, I do wear a number of hats here in DC. Um, I am the administrative and program director at. Um, Damien Ministries. I am the deputy director at the Capital uh, at, at the uh, Center for Black Equity. I'm the deputy director for Building Room Through Recovery at Westminster. 
I am the co-founder and co current co-chair of the Capital Ballroom Council, and I am also a commissioner with um, call for the Regional Commission on Health and HIV. <laughs> That's a lot of hats for real. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but these the bills. Well, Strawberry is part of a couple of those things. <laughs> Actually, um, Strawberry is also a commissioner uh, with me here in D.C. Um, he also does work with me for the Center for Black Equity, which is the organization that puts together D.C. and Black Pride every year. And Strawberry has been our volunteer of the year. He always comes out of support and helps us move forward with our mission. So Strawberry and I cross paths pretty often. So the first time, so I used to always see Strawberry around D.C., just around in spaces and things. I didn't know who the hell it was. And I was just like, who is this annoying ass like little kid? Um, but then I actually, Strawberry attended a retreat that I used to facilitate for a previous employer. Um, and that's when I actually had to like be in the same space with Strawberry, just like one on one. I was just like, oh, he's actually not that crazy. He's, you know, he's crazy, but he's not that crazy. Um, and that's, you know, ever since then, Strawberry and I have been rocking ever since then. But that was the first time, this was years ago, because um, I left that organization back in, oof, 2010, 2019? 20, no, it wasn't 2019, 2010, 2009. Yeah. Yeah, so I've left the organization a while ago, but, but Strawberry has, um, still been the same person um and um yeah we just you know constantly keep on crossing paths so you know after a while you kind of realize you know what let me go ahead and pull this person under my wing and let them be in my in my circle because i can't get rid of them clearly right. so you know so yeah you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> um a piece of advice that i would have given strawberry then and i'll still give strawberry now is just stay true to yourself be who you are um thinking in times and spaces that we're in now, there, there are people that would rather you fit into their box um, of what they find acceptable or they're comfortable in. And Strawberry's one of those people that has, as long as I've known them, existed outside of that box. And I know I've been around people, and he, has, he and I have had conversations, around people that wanted him to like tone it down you know, don't do this or don't do that. Um, but my advice has always been like, be you. Um, you only can be you. Um, you can't be anybody else. It's a lot more work to, to like be fake and it's just easy to be out, be yourself. So um, something I give advice to him then, I still give advice to him now, is just continue being true to yourself and being authentically who you are because um, that's what matters at the end of the day. Uh, that he reminds me of me and an older man. I was like, oh, well, if he can do it, I can do it because... He's just as busy as I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely look up to him for getting paid for everything he did. Because that was something he definitely made sure that I started doing yes. back when he knew me. He was like, you got to stop doing so much stuff for free. I know that you love doing it. You can be passionate about it. That's fine. You know, you got to also said, but get paid for get, what you do. Get paid for what you do. Know, you know, listen, they pay other people for it. Pay us for it, right? Exactly. You know, our, our, our other our, our counterparts around here, they don't do nothing for free. Like, they get paid to be give all the advice and support. So, it's time for us to start getting paid to support these narratives and making our information. Because people just take our information and take what we give them and just run with it, right? right? We should get, 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 get some sort of compensation for it, something. Right. You know, so, yeah. Absolutely awesome, awesome. Uh, anything you want to add? He's amazing. I look up to him. Oh, he's like <laughs> dad. We are live with Strawberry. <laughs> How you doing? Hi, everybody. So we're at the police station because I wanted to meet with the chief of police or the community outreach portion of the police station to get them involved with our moment of silence that we're doing for COVID related project that I'm working on. <laughs> so the project is for those that we lost to COVID because I feel like everybody lost everyone to COVID dealing with this whole crazy outbreak and dealing with the vaccinations, believing it, believing not in it, people going to get it, people not going to get it, then it's the whole booster shot. So it's just been a whole crazy situation. There's been a, whole, a large number of people that we lost as far as friends, family, and loved ones. And people haven't been able to celebrate or honor them the way that they should be honored. So I wanted to get, do a moment of silence for those that we lost to COVID and get the important people, or you know, just those people with the higher ups in the DMV area involved and just have them show face and you know, say a few words for those that we lost to those in COVID and show that we all still matter under one umbrella. 
absolutely. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's an awesome project. Yep. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. All right, well, that really wraps up this uh, day with strawberry. It's been an amazing day. Uh, it's been a long, long, long day. Long day, long week, long month, and long journey. <laughs> uh, so tell us also more about DC Beans. Oh, and definitely with DC Beans is an organization I've been working with for a while. They love doing free events here in the DMV for the people in the community, outside of the community. They just love showing face and showing love, support to all those, no matter how you identify. But DCBN is definitely there for you. They love showing how they can express all the foundation of how you identify, how you live, how we all should love and accept one another. So definitely hook, lick them up on Instagram at DCBN's at DCBNs, that's it. <laughs> and, I love sorry, the audio website at DCBNs.org. Oh, well, you can find me on Facebook at Chow May. That's Chinese for Strawberry Cox on Instagram. It's Strawberry with three Bs, the number 48. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Strawberry. It's been such a lovely day. And what are you, what, what are you up to for the rest of the day? For the rest of the day, I'm about to go run a few little errands for my mother and then go eat because I bitch is hungry. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. Have a great day.